Is your video post-production workflow tedious and time-consuming? One way to make the process quicker is to edit with a native video format. In this tutorial, we'll go over the benefits of using raw and native video formats, as well as the drawbacks of relying on transcoding and proxies in the post-production process. By the end, you'll know how to ditch the proxy and start working with a native format. Let's get started. Chris here from VideoMaker. There are time codes below if you want to know what we're covering or want to jump to any place in this video. Do you want to edit faster? If so, we have a list of the top 10 keyboard shortcuts you need to know. To get it, click on this card or the link in the description. Let's start with some definitions. Native video is the video format that your camera records directly onto the capture media. Depending on your camera, different recording options may be available, but whatever your options, it's always nice to use the highest quality format whenever possible. That's how you make the most out of your production gear. However, these files can be quite large with high bit rates, making them unwieldy on ill-equipped editing systems. Raw video is video that retains all of the information gathered from the camera's image sensor. That means you can adjust things like exposure and white balance in post-production. The trade-off is that these files are often huge with high bit rates. They can be difficult or impossible to work with if you aren't prepared. So many editors choose to transcode their raw video into other formats before starting the editing process. Transcoding is the process of turning one video format into another, in this case, one that's more compatible with your editing system. A proxy is a specific type of transcoded file that is meant to be replaced with the original file at the end of the editing process. Ideally, you won't have to transcode. You'll be able to pull your footage directly off your capture card onto your storage drive and into your editing timeline without any problems. This is the fastest way to get from the shoot to the finished video. Instead of spending time processing files, you can simply load your footage into your editing application and get to work. However, to accomplish this, you'll need a high performance editing system that supports full resolution raw and native formats. The key is to configure a workstation to play your video files in real time. High performance workstations like the Dell 7770 and the Dell 3660, for instance, offer high powered CPUs and GPUs that make native and raw workflows practical. We briefly defined transcoding and proxies earlier, but let's dig in a bit deeper into these concepts and why you might want to use them or avoid them. Transcoding is the process of changing the original file format into another video format type to better work with the computer or editing program you're using. You might transcode your footage if you need to reduce the file size or increase playability when the original file type requires a more powerful GPU or CPU. Once you transcode your footage, you'll edit using the transcoded files and then export your final video from those files. While transcoding is a good workaround if your footage doesn't agree with your editing system, it does have some drawbacks. First, transcoding can result in quality loss. Choosing the right codec can mitigate this, but in some situations, quality loss is just inevitable. The other major drawbacks is transcoding is a time-consuming process. It can potentially add hours to your editing workflow depending on the amount of footage, its resolution, and its file type. Now, let's look at proxies. As we mentioned earlier, a proxy is a type of transcoded footage that you plan to replace at the end of the editing process with the original full resolution footage. Because you plan to use the original files for export and delivery, you don't have to worry about preserving resolution or image quality. You can change aspects like resolution, bit rate, and bit depth without impacting the final product. That means proxy files can be super small, and that makes them a good choice for editing on low-powered editing systems. Like transcoding, however, proxy workflows have drawbacks. Creating the proxy files takes time and adds steps to the post-production process. Plus, many editors dislike editing with proxies because of how ugly they can be. Having to edit what you know should be beautiful footage at a less than standard definition can be discouraging. So how do you avoid the pitfalls of transcoding and proxy editing? You have two options. You can make sure your editing system is equipped to handle the video formats you want to use, or you can limit your video capture to formats you know are compatible with your setup. With the first option, you're getting the best image quality possible without the hassle of transcoding. The second option means you're missing out on some of your camera's capabilities, but you still save time in post-production. With that in mind, let's take a look at what you need with an editing system to work with raw and native video formats. 
First, your editing system will need a powerful multi-core CPU. For instance, Adobe recommends an Intel 6th generation processor or newer for editing HD video in Premiere Pro, and at least a 7th gen processor for 4K and above. Likewise, DaVinci Resolve minimum CPU requirement is an Intel Core i7, but the recommended processor is an Intel Core i9. You pair that up with at least eight gigabytes of RAM and can go up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. Next, you'll need a good CPU with plenty of dedicated VRAM, at least six gigabytes for 4K editing in Premiere Pro and eight gigabytes or more for working with raw and native footage in DaVinci Resolve. You also need lots of reliable storage since these files are typically quite large. With these components, you'll be able to edit most video formats, but always double check the requirements and recommendations of your specific editing software. Each software and video format combination is different and may require more or less power to work with. Once your computer is equipped with the resources to handle the workload of raw and native format editing, test out your setup to make sure you're getting the results you need. Before starting a new video project, record some test footage in the format you would like to use and do a trial edit to make sure everything is working as expected. Let's do that now with our two example editing systems, the Dell 7770 and the Dell 3660. Both these workstations are configured with raw and native video editing in mind. We'll start with the Dell 3660. We've imported some raw footage, and as you can see, we can take the footage directly from the media card to our storage drive and then start editing. The playback is smooth, allowing us to watch back our edit in real time. Let's try the same thing with the Dell 7770. This time, we've imported some native format footage. Again, playback is smooth and lag-free, allowing us to edit high-quality footage without the hassle of transcoding. By now, you should understand the differences between raw, native, transcoded, and proxy footage, along with the benefits and drawbacks of each. We also talked about the ways to avoid transcoding and proxy editing so that you can skip those tedious tasks and jump right into the fun part, editing your masterpiece. Remember, if you'd like to get our list of the top 10 keyboard shortcuts you need to know, click on this card or the link in the description. If you've made it this far, consider subscribing and liking this video. In the next video, we'll cover what it all boils down to when configuring your video editing computer.